Oh, um, just for the public to have access to the Historical okay. Commission's meeting. And how, you're, you're more than welcome to do that, obviously. Even if you weren't welcome to do it, you would have the right to do it. So it's all great. <laughs> that, out of curiosity, solely, what medium would it be available to the public group? Uh, YouTube.com, um, North Street Association. Okay. Um, so if we want to refer someone to, to view it, that helps. That's great. Correct. Thank you very much. Oh, you're you. welcome. You're welcome. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> okay. First item on the agenda is um, to uh, for us to receive public comments. Uh, unless a representative of North Street Association would like to make public comments. Well, I'm not a representative of North Street Association. Okay. Um, I'm not even a resident of Northampton. I was. I'm an erstwhile resident of Northampton. Oh, okay. um, yes, and I used to walk the dog path. Yes, uh -huh. I remember. <laughs> yes, you uh -huh. had the uh, trials and tribulations down the hill from me. I did. I did. Okay, very good. But the yeah. only com I'm just curious about Shaw's Motel. Well, is uh, that is that in your purview? Is it in our purview? Uh, yes. It, some aspects of Shaw's. Motel could be in our purview if it were, because it, my information, which is informal at this point, is that it was built uh, prior to 1900, and if that's the case, then if any demolition of it were to be proposed, then that could potentially become under our purview. Okay. Just because um, when I used to deliver meals on wheels, I delivered to people who, if you would say, lived in there, um, and they're just... They're just the conditions are just it's bad. Yeah. So it's not our place to pass judgment on its use. Um, um, we are a regulatory and planning related okay. organization, and so um, the sole um, currently the sole influence we have would be the imposition or non-imposition of a demolition delay, and that would have a maximum uh, length. Uh, one year, um, and um, beyond that, we would respond to any questions from the planning department or from the council uh, regarding our advice on, on the use or, or you know, how to include it into the uh, any plans for the city or an advisory group to, to the right. council. Right, and because it's near Pomeroy, that's turning into an historical street, right? This that that is a street uh, where men, that's an area, an entire area where many. Um, Homeowners have uh, uh, sought to include the whole neighborhood as part of the National Register. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, the, the Historical Commission doesn't have any um, direct control over that other than to uh, recommend that uh, to, to the agency that creates those, those neighborhoods. So um, it's outside the boundary of that. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's also outside, it, it borders it. It's outside the boundary, and furthermore, the, the uh, a National Register District doesn't have uh, anything like the kinds of um, restrictions or protections that a uh, historic district has. And, okay. uh, and uh, my colleague Bruce Kruiski has is actually much more, far more of an expert on this than I am, so I'll let him speak to it. Well, I was just going to say, the only reason that we would have anything to say or do about uh, Shaw's Motel is if an application for demolition comes in, and yeah, we yeah. would review whether or not um, it, it's of any historic significance, and if we determine that, then we can put a delay on the demolition up to a period of one year. Um, but, um, you know, absent any previous research on it or anything like that, we don't have that. And I think it's outside the area of the Pomeroy Terrace where they're thinking about National Register. Yeah. So all my comments at this point are purely hypothetical, yeah. so seriously. Um, but uh, I'm there just to describe how we could become. Many people assume we either are a historical repository of all information about the history of the city, which we're not. Uh, and I refer people to Historic Northampton or to Forbes Library for that. Um, uh, or um, that, um, uh, that we have a budget to do things which we don't because we're a city body, not a, not a Agency. Right. But um, you can determine whether or not historic buildings are, are demolished or not. If, if, if an application to demolish it were to be submitted to the building inspector, 
building inspector, and, and if it, we were to determine that it was that it fit into the category of buildings, which I, I, I believe it does, uh, just to be frank. Um, There's actually two or three buildings. Ah, okay. So then I was, I was just referring to the, the, the building immediately uh, close to the road. Um, but thank you. Um, then, then we would have uh, the capacity to uh, look at whether a, a demolition delay should be imposed or not. That the intention of the delay is not to uh, get in the way of progress, but to uh, to help uh, owners um, uh, think about their, their the whether they truly have only the option of, del of destroying a, a historically significant building. Um, ultimately, uh, after one year's delay maximum, um, the owners have continue to have the right to demolish a building. I so see. it's not a permanent thing. Uh, because that would only be... Because uh, there know. is another historical building being demolished in town, right? The one that... There's several. The David Rug Ruggles Society had a historical tour. There's, there's, another, there's another building on King Street that is also uh, you know, a yeah. matter of concern, right? Yeah, so that's... that's what she's yeah, right. yeah. Um, so since this up is going to be on YouTube, would you guys mind introducing yourselves? No, not at all. I'll be happy to. Um, I'm David Drake. I'm ch uh, chairman of the uh, commission. And I'm Bruce Kravisky, resident of Northampton, retired architect. I'm Craig Delapena. I own several businesses here in town and represent the, the realtor side of things on the historical commission. I'm Margaret Lindenthal, another member of the commission. I'm Sarah Lavalley, the staff person to the commission. Okay. Super. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, well, normally we uh, receive comments rather than having extended discussion, but I'd be happy to, given that it's just you here this, this evening, if there is, is there any other questions specifically on the uh, Shaw or other Shaw Motel or other issues? No, not at this point in time, but thank you for entertaining oh. them. And I'm, well. glad the, uh, I'm, I'm glad that the, I'm glad that the the local neighborhood associations have shown an interest in how this thing gets redeveloped Thanks. because it is a it's in transition right now it's not going to be derelict like piece of junk building forever good so. thank you okay the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from march 26 2012 that were distributed um by email by sarah uh is there a uh, motion to approve motion okay um then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? And carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the continued discussion of addition of partial demolitions to demolition ordinance. Um, Karen, do you have any additional new information on that? Well, topic? at the last meeting, um, the commission asked if I could take a look at the Newton ordinance and try and, and incorporate as much as I could of that ordinance into ours. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized that the way the commission is currently set up dealing with the building department, we couldn't really incorporate any of it. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, Newton's is set up to have discretionary review as to whether the ordinance is even triggered, which mm -hmm. Louis has said he, he doesn't want to start dealing with because that opens him up to appeals and it complicates the process a little bit. Um, and it would also create the need for additional level of staff issued permit as permits as well as a design book. And we we currently don't have the staffing time or the, the funding to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I took a stab at at least addressing partial demolition oh, good. As, as much as possible in a yeah. very limited manner. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the so this is the the changes to the ordinance that I'm suggesting. So on the first page, um, we used to have only one definition of demolition. So I pulled that out as a total demolition and partial demolition. And just for discussion purposes, I can suggested you, uh, that partial demolition. Can I interrupt you just and say, this is just for, for, the, for the record, this is just a draft and uh, uh, for our discussion and does not represent any uh, kind of formal uh, document yet. Okay. Thank you. So, but you're welcome to it. So for partial demo, I suggested just 25% of the exterior area of said building or structure being removed. 
just to start up talking. Twenty five percent or more? At least twenty five percent. At least twenty five. Yeah. And then change the definition of total demolition to complete removal and then clarify what a demolition permit actually is. And then the the second page, the only change in the application is just to include or partial demolition. And one thing that, um, that Carolyn suggested I add is removing the central business district from this. Is, is, is removing the central business district from mm -hmm. this definition just because it's not under the historical commission's mm -hmm. Purview, and they have an established process that would get complicated. Okay, I have a problem with you know a twenty-five percent or fifty percent mm -hmm. or thirty-five percent um, because the way this says exterior area of the building does that mean the uh, footprint twenty-five percent? Does that mean twenty-five percent of the primary facade? Uh, so that you could take the roof off but leave two, three stories. Uh, it's not a good way yeah. to do it. I tried to, I, yeah. I had all, all kinds of, of definitions, well, and then each one we just, to just got more to talk about the character defining. Right. Yeah. Anytime you use a numerical oh, thing, it's, it's not really going to work. Um, it, it, the goal should be to have something that, you know, any action that removes uh, any amount of a building that destroys the um, architectural significance or architectural character, mm -hmm. that should be it. Because it just might be that, uh, you know, they remove stained glass windows out of first churches. Well, you know, that's not 25% yeah. of the building, but that certainly destroys the architectural yeah. character. Let me, let me state the challenges so, as I see yeah. it, because I, I, as an historian, <laughs> I completely agree with you. Right. Completely. Yeah, that's, um, that's definitely the best oh, right. case. Oh, that's the, what the challenge that's before us is, is that we are not being tasked uh, with the responsibility of creating an historic district throughout Northampton. Uh, we can try, but I can uh, I can pretty well assure everyone here that the this, this city is not ready to have us unilaterally declare a, 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 a historic district throughout Northampton. Um, so the, the our ability to uh, police the uh, you know the gingerbread or the stained windows or the leaded glass or the um, the spindle uh, railing or something like that is is very desirable but mm -hmm. not realistic. Um, uh, so we need to we need to sort of craft something which is inherently a compromise, which protects more than what's being protected now, but which uh, does not at the same time uh, guarantee that this is a dead on arrival uh, piece of uh, or proposal to the to the uh, uh, to the council. Um, the uh, uh, well, that's enough. That's enough for now. So I, do, do you, I think Bruce's point is, is excellent about twenty of a, a, a classic uh, percentage being potentially a, an ambiguous issue. At the same time, we, it's, it's, we need to understand that, it's, that it is developed so as to, and perhaps improperly, but it's developed to get rid of ambiguity. We're, 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 we're tasking the, the, the building commissioner. To police to to handle this and uh, to to kick over to us for our review any demolition and and if we simply say kick over to us anything that destroys the architectural integrity of it's, 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 you're right so what we have to do in the building inspector <laughs> rightly say I don't know what you mean by that um, so this is an attempt to to say well you know put it put a, a numeric on it a metric on it but Bruce is quite right I believe to say that that's not the right metric. So our, our, you know, that, then we come back to, well, what is the right metric? What, how, what can we give to the building commissioner so that there is no ambiguity, so that citizens of the town can you know, be planful about architectural changes without feeling like there's, it's up to the fee out of this board and, and, and so forth. So um, those are the two issues in, that I see, and I think it's doable, mm -hmm. but, but um, uh, how should we, t should we Think of an alternative for that for that gross percentage that you mentioned. Well, I don't think wall surface or I don't think it makes a whole heck of a lot of difference. 
okay. um, what you say on this because of, it says 25% of the exterior area of said building. Um, I think that uh, you really have you know, the footprint of the building is one mm -hmm. dimension. The other would be you know, the primary the facade. Um, and I think that would be primarily what we would be interested in or um, street-facing facades because that will take care of a corner a lot. Um, you know, I, I would say if, if you said footprint or whatever the building inspector wants to hear, uh, plan view or whatever, plus 25% um, or whatever, let's just say 25 of the street facing walls um, that would be demolished. And again, you know, how that would be interpreted if I wanted to tear the front porch off of my well, house. Well, it's you want to say facade instead of walls. Yeah, well, facade. Because it would include, that would include detail. Right. Yes, oh, Somebody absolutely. would say, oh, this is, yeah, a, right. no, this that, is an applied detail, point. it's not a wall. A facade, yeah. Which would include more visual things. When in doubt, have the building inspector come see us. Because I know when we passed the original ordinance, mm -hmm. we, again, had originally wanted something about partial demolition and couldn't come to an agreement with the building inspector. Mm -hmm. And I think it did have a percentage. Mm -hmm. And then the issue was, well, is it a percentage of the volume? Is right, it yeah. So it does have to be specific that way. Yeah. Well, that might be the third dimension, the, mm -hmm. the plan view, mm -hmm. the facade, uh, or the volume. So that would be three, because that way, you know, if they're, well, I don't know, but put those in there and we'll figure it out later. I, 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 I like yeah. your take on that. My main problem yeah. with this whole process has been that the building commissioner's form does not include us. We're an afterthought. It's handwritten. It's still, it's still handwritten. Yeah, that's not right. The only, the only way that it's like that is because he doesn't make the form. It's generated um, by, a, by our permit software company. So he's just not able to change it. It's not any uh, animosity towards the historic Central Business District also handed? I, I can't remember. Oh, well, that's a yeah. zoning thing. Oh, okay. so yeah, it's anything that's not but that's really also standard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not well, just, it's it's not it's just it's that. It's an interesting point, but let's assume yeah. that, that right. it is on the form. Mm -hmm. We return to the, you know, the twin challenges. We all right. want a historic district. It's unrealistic right. to ask for it. Let's You're not go there. Right. And, right. and secondly, right. we need metrics for the building commission. Right. Um, those are the two standards that we have to meet. And if we uh, if we stand, you know, on the basis that we want a historic district or nothing, then we're right. we are shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. Um, uh, if we don't give him metrics, then we will not, you know, be serving this purpose well. So clearly, in anything we propose has to be a compromise. Uh, it has to move the, the ball further down the field than where it is right now, uh, but it will not uh, uh, be where we you know, perhaps would prefer it. Uh, but that's uh, that has to be fair to all the citizens of, of, of the city. Um, so it, you know, in in the spirit of compromise, in the spirit of not getting everything that we perhaps would like, um, what can we propose? Well, I, I would think if the um definition was expanded to make it clear that we're talking about uh, you know, the, the footprint of the building, uh, the facades, street facing facades, and the uh, volume, those three dimensions, um, then I think the building inspector could say, okay, we'll calculate this out, and we're going to lose some roofs, we're going to lose some front porches, we're going to lose some stuff like that. But it might cause the property owner to think about it mm -hmm. a little bit. And certainly if they're working with an architect or designer who's interested in the quality of the product, well, you probably won't have much of a problem. But, <coughs> but I, I would think those three elements, and use, use the 25%, I think anything greater than that's going to scare off anybody who would review this for ordinance change. I have a um, proposal for the committee, and that's that I mean, obviously any decisions on this have to come before a quorum of regular scheduled committee, but I wonder if 
Bruce, can I ask you to simply you know, be a sort of a working group with Sarah, the two of you? Sure. And I think I think I speak for the committee in saying that that 25% concept is, is resonates with this committee. But Bruce, you brought up very appropriate, accurate points about how that could be misconstrued and thus misused, and thus is, is not yet a useful metric. Okay. But could you perhaps come in and talk with Sarah I'd be happy. and uh, spend an hour or two and maybe help formulate some language, which will then come back for our consideration as a committee? Would that be? Sure. Is that okay? I just wonder if you're happy. Because I may just not have heard you right now. Where you were saying, we'll use 25% for the moment. But you were saying you thought that if it were more, are you saying a greater percentage? That that would bother people more because if you said at least fifty percent, then fewer projects would come under this ordinance. If you said it had to be destroying at least half the building, it means that oh. smaller projects yeah. okay. aren't subject to it. So that's I, I see. What, yeah, okay. Right. Yes. No, you, right. You, you picked so it up. Twenty-five percent means that you're retaining seventy-five percent. Right. Right. Okay. Right. right. So again, so, if the compromise were to say, well, it has to be more than a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. But again, yeah, it, I know it has to be really measurable. Okay. Sure. And I like the idea of the street view facades as being something. Right, right, because we're more concerned with. Yeah. yeah, I think street frontage as opposed to view mm -hmm. from the public right of way, mm -hmm. that's too tricky. But I'll be happy. Because then you can say, well, I can see this part of the house. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll be happy to meet with you. I'm going to be out of town for a couple of weeks starting the 12th. Okay. Well, I, um, I'll, I, I'll take a stab at yeah, that, because I wanted to keep it simple just for discussion. Do that, and then we can get together and have a cup of coffee. And Thank you very much for willing to share that. Okay. okay. Any, any other comments on that? I regret that we can't go as far as Newton did. I beg your pardon? I, I wish we could go as far as Newton did. But oh, I think yeah. right now we're really penned in by, yeah. by the yeah. current yeah. process. That's, that's, that's a city three times our size. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and is everyone comfortable with the with the two tenants that I voiced in the beginning. Sure. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has to be fair to everyone and not, not a full-blown historic district and it has to right. be measurable. Um, right. So it can be referred to us. Okay, good. Um, the next item on the agenda is State Hospital Memorial Committee update. Uh, and Barbara, for the sake of, of viewers who may be unfamiliar with this agenda okay. item, could you sort of review the background for why we're working on this? Sure. Um, the, if I can remember what the CAC stands for, Community Advisory Committee yeah. for the, uh, what's now the former Northampton State Hospital. Um, uh, one of the more recent um, uh, charges of that committee has been to um, create some sort of memorial to the hospital on the grounds um, uh, where it stood. And there is a um, sort of a loosely formed subcommittee that was um, appointed uh, by the um, CAC. I'm one of the members of that. And um, we have um, one of the projects that has been going forward to some degree is uh, something that's sometimes referred to as a fountain project to create some sort of memorial park which would include the, um, the original fountain that stood in front of the building known as Old Main, because that, that was preserved, um, you know, kept, hasn't been um, renovated or restored yet, but it's, it's um, safely kept somewhere. And um, so our most recent meeting, <coughs> which we, we, we really want to step forward and start um, going a little uh, faster now, is that the developers are now ready to put in more roads in the area that, that where the presumably this memorial park will go, which is very close to the original location of the fountain. In fact, it's they're even thinking it could go where the original base was mm -hmm. because of where the the, um, the land that will be available through mass development. But as we've been meeting, as this committee's been meeting, um, the, the CAC is not a permanent body. It has no funds, it hasn't, and it doesn't have me, it's not a, it, you know, will be dissolved someday, and it can't raise money if people want to give money towards the project, because it will have to be fundraising for this, they can't accept money, because there's no way to do that. So, the Memorial Committee, with, with the CAC, will develop a plan and a design, and we will participate in raising funds for this project. And mass development, I think it's by November, no, I'm sorry, this is by May, 
they have promised us a, um, I guess it's a site plan of what the lot, where the lot really will be that, that's going to be used for the Memorial Park, and maybe a preliminary design that we could work with. <coughs> um, but we may work somewhat with them and somewhat hiring other um, landscape designers to get the plan. But one of the issues is <coughs> that an organization needs to step forward to essentially take financial ownership of the project and be able to accept monies and um, apply for a grant from the Community Preservation Act because we're thinking that's going to be a source of a lot of the funds for this project. And of course the idea has come that the Historical Commission might be willing to accept that role. And um, my husband Joe has, is part of this committee also, and he's spoken with um, the mayor, the current mayor, um, who there's no real commitment yet, but he sees it as a sound idea that the city would accept ownership of this land. And perhaps the parks department would do any maintenance that would be necessary, but there would be very little maintenance necessary here. I mean, that would be part of the design, that it would need very little maintenance. Also, members of the neighborhood have expressed interest in possibly helping to take care of it. You know, if somebody, if there's some grass there, the person who lives next door to it has said, well, maybe I would just mow it when I mow my lawn or something. So, um, or, there, or if there's ever really a neighborhood association, they might accept the responsibility. But it wouldn't be our responsibility. I mean, what we're trying to say is we would be, sort of, the, the project would be under our aegis, we would accept monies, we would do the grant but to the C CPC, but we wouldn't be responsible for it in any way in perpetuity, and we wouldn't be responsible for maintenance. That would just be set up in this whole plan. Um, I think that was, is there anything else we talked about? Um, and I said it has to, it really feel like this has to move ahead because they're going to be building this road possibly this summer. And sorry, and so it feel, we feel like we need this plan so that that can be part of the landscaping or grading that would be needed at the same time where they're building the road. Um, so that's all I have to report. That's where we stand. And we have had some, uh, well, we're rechecking with this company about restoring the fountain to get more current prices, estimates for that. Although the, the landscape development uh, designer from Mass Development has said he will also prepare, I think it's a he, will also prepare a preliminary budget, what, what he sees as possible costs for the restoration of the fountain. Um, some sort of signage, we're thinking maybe either doing kiosks like there are around downtown or some kind of um, signs and maybe a brochure that people could pick up, some other photographs, but that's where we stand. So the question is, will the Historical Commission accept that, that they would be the sort of the, the well, First let me say, I'm, del I'm, delight I'm delighted to, it really is moving thank forward. you for your hard work on this, <laughs> right. and I'm delighted to see the project moving well, Joe forward. Joe has done a lot too. Because uh, like he said he it's been did. a long time. Um, yeah. My, my uh, so again, the, the core of it, very, very good news. I think I need clarification, perhaps from Sarah, uh, or if you can look into this, if you don't have clarification tonight. My impression is that if this is something that is going to be owned by the city, um, then it, any money is being given to the city, uh, just as money is given by the CPA to the city for bridge restoration or library restoration or um, uh, yeah, low, you know, fair uh, income uh, housing and so forth, um, and that um, in in applying to the CP. See, Wayne would certainly um, stand and, and, and present the, the, the concept, uh, but would probably, um, the, the, would, the project would certainly be helped if all of us went. Right. And, uh, and also the members of the memorialization exactly. committee would be happy, I mean I think there's even a, fund, a grant writer on that committee, and we could even essentially prepare that document, yes. the application, but again it can't be in our name because there is no entity. But I think I think the I think the recip any as far as receiving monies, mm -hmm. we don't have a separate five hundred one c three identity. I think we we are an, a, an advisory commission of the city. Well, I was kind of saying I think I meant that the city would accept it. I don't oh, know okay. if it would go into our would gift would account. Okay. I, I don't know if it would go into our gift account, but it would be accepted by the city. I, I, I think that. that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, okay. I think it's great because to have the city accept it, uh, they would uh, then oversee the, the funding and holding of the funds. Mm -hmm. 
the parks department is involved in you know, the original design or what have you, right. um, that would be good. And I think that the long-term maintenance, you might be able to have negotiate an agreement with whatever homeowners association yeah, that's one will of the evolve, things we were suggesting. and they could say, well, we, our association will take care of that. Small, right. the small maintenance. Right. You yeah. know, if it is it is it foreseen that this will have water in it? Uh, we don't know. It may not be a working fountain. Yeah. It's because that's more complicated. Obviously, who's going to pay for the water? Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the neighbors have said, oh, well, we wouldn't mind doing that, but. The fountains and floors are being restored. The fountains. Who's well, paying for that? Was that well, the one the entrance to Florence? Well, so there was. There's two. One is operational now. There's a fundraiser for the other one. Right. The one nearest the Civic and Business Association headquarters was funded by late Ray Labar. There's a five thousand dollar donation to have the hydraulics redone and the whole thing waterproofed, and it was done by the city DPW. And there's a fundraising effort underway to do the other one at Trinity Park. And I, I see this as a, a no-brainer. There needs to be water in there. If there was water in that thing, and, and we're going to start fundraising water. or at least provide an umbrella to fundraise on this, this will, this will come together quickly. Yeah, it's it's right. a recirculating water, so you're yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right, right. buying gallons. I can say, too, that right. the CPC seems to favor um, projects which have a broad base of community support. Including right. additional fundraising. Oh uh, right, yeah. No, we have plans to do that. So that would be that would oh, yeah. be wonderful if uh, the current homeowners association <coughs> would be mm -hmm. interested in joining the, this uh, application to yeah. the CPC. Yeah. Very good. So the historic commission will, will be the ultimate. We would be the um, applicant. Yeah, we would be, we could be the ultimate uh, applicant to the CPC. Okay. And this is just one of a series of small things that I would like to see us do to, to, to break the agenda here. But I believe that, that we have a role to, to do these small little things as opposed to big things so much. Like fences around the cemeteries that are proper instead of chain link. Mm -hmm. you know? the, the, the challenge simply is to, I mean, if you're applying for CPC granting, mm -hmm. is to um, put the application together. Um, and. Um, uh, I'd be happy to, I think it's great, any, any suggestion like that is welcome if it's going to protect the history of the city. Great. So the next CPA round will start yeah, we have to. Um, in August. How will people like Florence will be there in August? Okay. So for the, for the time being, I think you can work with the, with the, um, the sense of this meeting is that, that we are going to approve. Right. And support any effort yeah. to restore the fountain uh, and uh, uh, to, to memorialize the, the, the work and lives of uh, individuals who worked at the hospital. Good. Um, the next item on the agenda. Now we have to get the city to really get over Yeah, the that, that's the easy part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working on um, the details. The, the, uh, the next item on the agenda is, is section 106 review. Veterans Affairs Medical Center Park and Ride uh, letter that was, I think, distributed to everyone, uh, basically uh, requesting our review in principle of a park and ride lot on the property of the Veterans Amer uh, Administration Medical Center uh, and for a connection, I'm pleased to see, uh, to the um, uh, bicycle path the, uh, uh, that, that runs uh, adjacent to it. Um, I thought we we talked about this last year. The park and ride, even two years ago. The park and ride lot up there. And well, maybe it was a done deal. deal. This might be a different one. Um, yeah, this is just the boilerplate thing. They have to get the local. This is this is the the site locus uh, yeah. you described here. Um, Sarah, have you seen plans on this? Is, is there going to be a pedestrian phase light? I have light? not. This is all I've, I've seen about it so far. Yeah, I don't think this, this is, is very, very early any in the impact <laughs> on yeah, so. the historic resources of Northampton. I know we, we, we supported um, the uh, work on a, on a house up there that was uh, part of a small shelter.
Walter, did we not? Couldn't the C I know the CPC funded the rehab of about two years ago. The rehab of or at least of a of a building and it's on the property. It, but and not not to belabor the point, but as long as this property as long as this project is not um, infringing on any existing structures, um, I see no reason not to move forward with it because uh, that 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 hill has been significantly um, uh, landscaped and, and altered from its uh, primeval state already. Uh, it's a lovely hill, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure they will do the job tastefully, and uh, uh, and it's for a very good cause. And it connects to the bicycle path, which yeah, is a great progress. I'm like glad the people are thinking of, of park and ride as including the bicycle sure. uh, these days. That's very nice. Well, I would move that we accept this with the recommendation that it project goes forward. Mm -hmm. I second. Uh, all those in favor? Say aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Uh, it passes. Okay, the next item uh, on the agenda is the Local Historic Preservation Restriction Program Planning. And I will turn that over to you, Sarah. So, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, or a year and a half ago, the Historic Commission submitted a CPA application and was funded for a Local Historic Preservation Restriction Program. And this wouldn't cover the costs of the restrictions, um, so we wouldn't pay for them, but we would just cover the, the costs These of Basically, the building by building, is that correct? Yeah. Um, and we did an initial mailing. We talked to some people in Elm Street and architects, and we've had no response whatsoever. Um, so if this is still a priority of the commission, I want to pick your brains about how best to move forward. Well, this, this is really an easement program mm -hmm. where the property owner would agree with the city that they would not do something or would do something. Uh, like they agreed that they would fix the building up or agree not to tear it down uh, and it becomes a binding agreement between the city and the property owner and I think the purpose of th this activity is to either encourage that or to facilitate it to the extent feasible within the city there being no cash involved or staff time involved that I'm aware of it should be fairly easy for the city to say, yeah, we'll go along with that. So I see it as, as basically um, just um, maybe to be practical, it's a set of forms that the city has ready in case we ever should have someone who wants to do that, but uh, basically uh, just do all the, the background paperwork um, so that if someone does approach the city on this topic, uh, it can be handled without staff time and, and without reinventing the wheel and Yes, we can do that. Here's, here's what you need to know about it. Here's how to do it, and um, and leave it at that. I don't think it requires any more funding. Well, what we were hoping for was a uh, a great example that would get people excited. We wanted one person to step forward, and hopefully that would be a catalyst for more of these. So we did a targeted mailing to people who had restored their homes in historic ways and people that had obviously put a lot of time into historic preservation, and we got some responses, but. Either timing wasn't right, or they had a mortgage, or things just weren't mm -hmm. working out. So we, we don't have any so far. It, the alienation of equity is a big issue for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so again, I'm sorry for belabor. Uh, what, what's the question at hand then? Uh, how should we move forward? We could just let the we could let the money sit, and eventually it will be returned to the CPA, um, because the only thing we can spend it on is. These soft costs. I would say as long as we have, as long as the, you have the documents and the, the, the explanatory information available to hand out to um, any person who might want to take part in this in the future, uh, if you have that now, I would just drop it and move on to other okay. other projects. I, I don't. But yeah, it, it might require legal fees to set up mm -hmm. the, the restriction or the easement. And so that's where you usually spend your money. Um, because, again, I, I think Northampton, the, your city solicitor is on retainer as opposed to staff. 
and you have to sort of budget his time, his or her time. Yeah, and this was for any soft costs, um, baseline, yeah. documentation, title search, whatever people need. You know what's left in that budget? Um, 10000 the, the full amount. 10000 Okay. Do, do you think it would be useful for us to look at the properties that you sent it to, see if we had any other ideas about <coughs> What, I mean, should we identify something that we really want somebody to step forward to do this, or that you're, you said essentially that's what you did? Uh, you we, had, we sent it to the Elm Street area, mm -hmm. um, and then case by case mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. You probably identified ones that we might think of anyway. But well, I don't feel good about us sitting on, on city money. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the chance that something might happen, I think we're either use it or return it to the citizens. And um, so let's, um, if if we're not enthusiastic about this, I would say let's return it to CPA for their for their use. Um, I wish we could exchange it for another project, but we can't do that. That's not how it works. Um, and um, uh, there must have been some reason why we. See, I don't remember. I know there was some thing several years ago why we came up with this as a program to alleviate some problem. But I don't really remember what it was. Well, I don't know. It, it works certainly for someone who is interested in preserving what they have worked on and acquired and, and what they love. Um, it, it would seem to be a viable concept because it's done all the time with land and farm farmland and so forth. It's just that um, when it comes to individual homes, um, so many homes either have equity that's still in mortgage or they have equity which is promised to extended family or something of that sort um, but you by restricting historic development on a single building without preserving without taking steps to preserve the quality of the surrounding neighborhood you you, you, run, you do run the risk of, of um, uh, reducing the future equity in that one building run the risk of increasing it as well, but it, it's apparently not a risk that many people are willing to take. So, I mean, short of a, of a campaign in the newspaper to explain it and promote it, uh, which I think is, is speculative and, and I'm not, as a result, so comfortable with it, um, I, uh, and in the absence of any notable um, uh, issue that, that um, or, or, or case study, I'm not sure if they're comfortable just sitting on the, on the phones. Um, we can wait until the contract runs out and then just return it to when the CPA that? and come up and know. It's, um, it's three years, <coughs> so we have about a year and a half left. Any feelings? So this might walk in the door. Yeah. And other jurisdictions, other communities that really have an aggressive big preservation program where they have more than $10,000, they will, in effect, buy that yeah, which which we didn't want to get into. No, but I mean that that's so. how it works in mm -hmm. other places. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'll give you ten thousand dollars if you yeah. promise never to tear down that building. Yeah, yeah. in this case, you're not really getting anything in return other than the satisfaction no. of knowing that it's something you really love always. That, will absolutely, always be and some there. people that's yeah. that's valid. That works. You just haven't found that person. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and this wouldn't cover interior changes. No. So anyway, so. Um, you know, all the lovely work you did on the inside of your house could still be reduced to rubble, um, even with the with the uh, preservation. So, um, what's I, I've heard you show interest in letting it run out. My interest was my suggestion was to do it now. I, I don't want to. I think it would be prudent to leave it in there a little bit longer, uh, because this is one of the options that's being discussed for the. Um, Round Hill Road area, the Clark School. Uh, if the historic district is not expanded in that area, this might be a tool that could be useful for that. So I would say let it ride for you know the year and a half that's left. I know this is something that um, Wayne has uh, advocated as a tool that could be used in lieu of a historic district. Can I take that as a motion That's a to, motion. to um, uh, hold the, the money until the um, until the grant period runs out? Is that yeah, that would be motion? Be the motion. Okay. So, uh, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Okay. I abstain. 
second. Is there a second on that? I thought I heard you say second. I thought, I thought it was second. I thought I saw you. Okay. But I'd also like—I mean, this wasn't part of the book. But I'd also like to know that. Three in favor. I'm But I'd also like to know that somebody is doing something to try and okay. use this in some way. That it's not just sitting there and nobody knows about it. And I know I know you said you are. Maybe it's worth going to the round hill with all the people again or something to, to ask if somebody wants to do this even before a decision about the district. It just seems like. Keeping it for another year and a half isn't very useful. It's not so being promoted. Um, next item on the agenda is review of mail. Um, Hampshire County 350th. Did I sign that? I didn't see it. If you did. I meant to. Um, and then something else to talk about while I grab that. You skipped um, demo review subcommittee membership. Big um, number four got jumped over. So we have we currently have a demo review subcommittee, so that when these requests can you, come in, uh, can you remind me of the membership on that? Uh, we weren't really sure. Okay. <laughs> That's why I put it on the agenda. Okay, and that was for uh, applications that, that came in at a certain window of time, so that they had to need to be responded to, or the next meeting, official meeting. Of yeah. This so I, I emailed them out. There's nothing. Okay. And did, up. what would what did we vote was the uh, required number of people on that subcommittee? It wasn't established. I, I think it's generally been three, though. Yeah, and some of the people on the subcommittee are no longer. Okay. So um, we really don't have one anymore. Yeah, Tris was always on. Yeah. I think I was. I was on it initially, but I don't think I was on it right now. Okay, but there's anyone who would like to be on that subcommittee? But I'm happy to be on it. Yeah. Okay, you'd be happy to be yeah. on. No, I'd be happy to. Okay, because the three. Of, of you uh, kindly be on that subcommittee. Yeah, we'll the, yeah. the responsibility should be fairly small because it would only right. be those applications that come in when the full committee can't right. make it's a deliberation. Right. Um, it's, it's also, yeah, thank you very much for doing that. We solved your problem while you were gone. Excellent. Um, the Hampshire Council of Governments has uh, uh, sent a form letter notifying us that the, the Hampshire County is celebrating its 350th anniversary, which is a mere pup compared to Northampton. <laughs> uh, the county's birthday is May 7th, coming out, which is Sunday, in recognition of this historic event, the Hampshire Council of Governments is planning events throughout the year, and we would be honored to have you and your organization participate in the celebrations. Below is a list of the planned events, and we hope that you contact us soon to learn how you may participate. Look for more information soon. It includes um, Hampshire County Day. Uh, the next one is slightly concerning. The next one says, Rare historic reproduction oh, is reproduction maps and documents for display, sale, and auction. But I, I, oh, <laughs> I hope that reproduction covers everything, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, under that category, it says for the first time ever, part of the county's vast historic archive of maps and historic documents will be available for sale in cooperation with the special collections at UMass Archives. These copies from the county's records, yeah, I hope that means what I hope it yeah. should mean, uh, dating back really <laughs> to the 1600s. Uh, it's not the same, right? Is this archive, well, the archive is now at UMass, and it's all been digitized. Because there was a, I went to a celebration at the courthouse at one point about that. Okay. That they had turned over a lot of early records Excuse me to for UMass. Yeah. No, it's uh, not very good <laughs> right um, uh, these copies from the, from the county's records dating back to the 1600s will be made available for sale during Arts Night Out from May to September. Um, there will be a local artist display and auction. There will be historic displays, and I'll read that. In June, we invite the historic commissions and societies and museums of the county to display a portion of their collection and to bring representatives to interact with the public who will be touring the exhibits as parts of the Arts Night Out. Now, I think many of us 
count as both members of the commissions as well as historic resources. Um, the, so, those are over 60 anyway. Um, so, some of us are more historic. <laughs> some more historic than others. Um, but, um, I think, did, did they say where this is? That this can you be in the public gallery? Do you have a normal uh, interaction with, with them in your planning role? Or? Um, I will now that the CPA has given them some money, but before that, not really. Because I think it, I mean, it might well, be useful if we had some that? presence there. We talked about our preservation sure. awards program, and it would be a way to reach a greater number of people. We could have either something set up so people could see some of the houses. We had a laptop there or something. And we could figure how about out something maybe. Um, I see it. Yeah, maybe photographs of our award ceremonies. Of uh, well, we did a, yeah. we did a, um, yeah. Um, you know, we could even keep it looks like we could print out colored copies of some of them so people could look through some of the houses mm -hmm. that have been awarded or so, um, they could figure something out. Depending on the venue, yeah. We might be interested in either just having people stand to talk, right. uh, or if there's a display area displaying uh, some of the activities of the historic mm -hmm. uh, commission, including the uh, annual historic awards, maybe a pamphlet about the uh, uh, demolition lay ordinance, um, yeah. and uh, many other activities it that we want to highlight to the board. A, a handout about and what the historic it. commission is and what it isn't. Yeah. There'll be a significant amount of people going to this because. Yeah. In our art gallery, we have over 100 people come through there mm -hmm. every, Very good. every month. So there'll be, some, <coughs> there'll be some traffic there, and they should become part of the brochure that's put out that has a map of all the places. Could we, could we yeah. photocopy this sure. for, for yeah, the staff? And, no, uh, maybe at the end of the meeting yeah, sure. um, uh, so that we can each take that home. But I think we would like to participate. More information, though. Yeah. Um, well, uh, sir, what's the best way? For us to uh, keep the ball rolling on this one, should we ask uh, them to, to email each of us, uh, or should they use you as a nexus on this? Or do you have particular questions about any of this, or just yeah? Our question is particularly the June the June activities, okay. uh, which they mentioned two thirds of the way down there. Um, could you let them know we are interested? Sure. In principle, and could they give some information on the venue and times that they have in mind? June could be a busy month, but I'd like to... Especially if they're going to have a the press release type Are they saying it's Arts Night Out? Because that's, is that usually the second Friday? Second Friday, Friday of the month. Second yeah. Friday of the month, so it'll probably be the second Friday of June. Whatever that is. The Eight. calendar there, there we go. June 8th. The 8th. Apologies to the chair. I have to leave in about ten minutes. Okay, so if there are items that require a vote and quorum, we, we're I coming up on that. Yeah, with that with um, all due dispatch, then we have received a uh, request for a uh, demolition review, demolition delay review um, for a property uh, located at 112 Ryan Road on the corner of, I don't know, this, this side street that it goes off of, but it's uh, shortly after Ryan Road begins near uh, uh, Long Road Rush. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, it sits on the left um, just prior to that, to that uh, side road going off. Um, the property is identified as having been built in 1870. Um, is that the official form meeting for that property? That's my that's my MLS. Sheet. This is yours. Yeah. We didn't have a form B no for, form B. for this. There is no form no. B for this. No. This is the huh. residential property well, record. Does identify it as 1870, but yeah, I doubt that I there would there be. A, um, why wouldn't there be? Because driving by, you take yeah. a look at it and say this has lost its architectural integrity. Oh, um, because of the vinyl siding. Well, oh, just because of the well, modifications, the additions, yeah. the changes. Um, I think this would be a very low priority for a Form B. Now, it might have some invisible history that uh, is important, you know, like our um, community center with the church up there, but architecturally it's been severely compromised. 
and also, and that's just from a design point of view, to say nothing from, um, you know, uh, the neglect that has brought it into this condition. Mm -hmm. See, this is a classic example of demolition by neglect. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, it's been in the same family for about two generations, and it's, it's, uh, it's an atrocious condition to live in. And the only attractive feature to this is to a developer who would then gut the building and then um, redo it, maybe, if they're very brave. Well, I'm, I know that don't I'm, work. I'm <coughs> preaching to the choir, and it's a very well-educated choir. Uh, but I, I, I do remind us all that our, our role here is not to really consider the interior condition of the building, um, but to consider the, the exterior of the building and its uh, desirability for uh, preservation um, for historical purposes or through purposes of uh, cultural or artistic or other uh, historically significant reasons. Would you like um, me to read the significance criteria? Please. Um, would you like me to read the significance criteria that the ordinance has listed? Would, would I like you to read them? Or yeah, to? just to frame um, them sure. a little bit. Um, they're short. Um, so number one, the building is building or structure is listed on or is within an area listed on the National Regi Register of Historic Places. The building or structure has been found eligible eligible um, for the oh, weird, uh, for the State Register of Historic Places or has an application pending. The building or structure is importantly associated with one or more historic persons or events or with the broad architectural, cultural, political, economic, or social history of the city or the Commonwealth or the building or structure is historically or architecturally important in terms of period, style, method, or building construction, or association with a recognized architect or builder. So if it doesn't meet any of those in the, in the eyes of the commission, then mm -hmm. demolition can proceed. I think we don't have any knowledge. And I talked to the listening agent. She was supposed to come here. The uh, family member was supposed to come here. I think... We can't just let it be torn down without at least calling in Chris Thompson or, or, or I haven't even talked to Steve Strymer. I've been doing 15-hour days right now. I don't know if anybody knows about this. We haven't heard of anybody because of the posting of this, have we? Nobody's contacted the historic commission. No, no, this unfortunately had to fall under other business because we didn't get it until Friday. Yeah, and, and we don't know what is... Would, what would replace this building. See, if they're going to say, oh, we're going to build a lovely two-story new house, or whatever. I, I love your values, that not our purview. That would color my thinking. Can I just ask a question? Did the, the, when did this application come in? The, the Friday. Actual date? Friday. So we have two weeks from Friday. Yes. Which is a week from this coming Friday. So what I might propose is that we postpone a decision so that we can try and see if there's any um, historical or cultural information about this, and the subcommittee could make the determination. This is the subcommittee. Right. Three. The three of us could make yeah. the determination, because I I don't feel I mean I don't feel comfortable voting on it, not really knowing anything about it, and again because it came in so close to the meeting and you know it wasn't advertised, so nobody really did come forward. And I to be honest, I was out of town, so I didn't even get a chance to drive by and look at it. Which, which I usually like to do instead of just looking at the pictures. It would be good if um, um, you could arrange a time when we could take a look inside. Can I, can I ask you a question? Just yeah. from, uh, um, it, to me, it's a classic gable end, right. uh, which seems to be missing one window. Is yeah. that on the second floor? Is that, yeah. is that your impression? Yeah, right. um, it also has what looks like That's a vernacular L right. uh, <laughs> on it that it was where I was came from in the south. They called it cat flat roof. Uh, yeah. It. it uh, don't put that in the minute. Cat slide. What's it called, actually? Uh, it was <laughs> broke back the uh, salt uh, box. It, has that, it, has, it comes down and then yeah. it has a it's sort of broken. In other words, the rear facade is lower. Welcome to the south. <laughs> no, I like that. Either. I like that. Um, uh, yeah, both, both of which are, are, are not modern and contemporary. I mean, this... this uh, the, the house certainly speaks, the front appearance certainly speaks of, a, of an historic Yeah, structure. there there are a thousand houses in Northampton that look just like this one that people are living in quite happily. Mm -hmm. 
um, that sort of fill the streetscape. And this one has been allowed to deteriorate uh, over time. Um, and it, it's been modified quite a bit. But I, I agree with Barbara that uh, I think it came in very late. We don't have folks from the neighborhood saying, oh, this is a very important part of the neighborhood. Um, I can't ask questions about what is proposed to replace it. Um, but uh, <laughs> no offense, <laughs> but we have to play by the rules. But um, um, I, I would really like to take a, take a look at it. Right now, it looks like pretty much of a dog what? building. But uh, who knows? And there what's, what's being proposed to me, it looks like here? There are some really interesting, significant. It, it, it uh, sounded to me like they wanted to be able to say in the listing, you could knock this down if you want. Right, to. that's and what not, they wanted to do. Right. <laughs> yes. it's, it's all about right. like greasing the skids for someone who's in the background, perhaps but afraid to go through the process. And so the seller has stepped up. Who The seller is an, an heir here to, to step up and go through the process, but no one's come forward here to visit us tonight. Well, again, um, we have to be excruciatingly fair in our administration oh, yeah. on this, and whether it's been on the market for one day or, or two years, um, but we Our have a particular good, consideration. We have a good opportunity today. This house is on the market. Yeah. So I could schedule a showing tomorrow, and we could all just go. Well, if you yeah. would, or at least at a time this, this could be to the yeah. three of you, that would be great. Because yeah. I, I just wouldn't feel comfortable voting on it without I, I, I appreciate that sensitivity yeah. and uh, that caution. Final, is there anything else to say, man? We will we'll table it. Uh, I don't think there's anything to vote. I don't know. So the. The subcommittee will have to get back to me right. with their determinations of significance okay, by so May. And I'm here until the 12th. Of you May. are full. The three well, of you are fully delegated yeah. to make a decision. By, on by this. the 11th. Yeah. Okay. So a decision by May 11th. Okay. okay. Just, just to be absolutely sure, so it's on the record. This, the, the subcommittee is fully delegated to make decisions on behalf. And so of three of us will go. We'll try to bring Steve yeah. with us or Chris. Yeah. Okay. See if there's any knowledge about yeah. this house. Okay. If we don't the day? Fridays, I think, is the day. Okay. okay. Or weekends, I think. Okay. We generally don't we do the day. It's, it's up to daylight you. until. Okay, and the final. Yeah, let's go. Well, we can talk about that later. The final item that's come to me as, as uh, chair was just a, 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 an email inquiry about the, uh, the age of uh, the Shaw's Motel building uh, that came up in the beginning of the meeting. I responded that I didn't know, and uh, the, but that I would ask uh, committee members to see if anybody had any idea. And I referred the correspondent to the uh, library and to the plan, planning department and to historic Northampton. Uh, and I don't think I can do any better than that, uh, other than going to the Hall of Records and, and, and tracking, tracing it down. Uh, so there's actually three structures there. Two of the structures, I'm sure, are older than our, our cutoff line. This hotel itself, I do not know. I do not know. But the assessor's records say 1900, but that's sort of the catch-all for, I have no idea uh, when this was actually built. Okay. Um, well, the, 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 my correspondent uh, indicated that he uh, may go down to the Hall of Records, and I asked him if he would kindly share his, the fruits of his research with us when he, if he, if he does that research, um, to do some title searching. Uh, but that we feel that uh, the library would be helpful in, in, in finding um, uh, these street records that show that it goes back to a farm, being a farmer's house in the, in the um, late 1800s, and perhaps it doesn't mean that it wasn't built before that point. The motel itself is definitely built specifically to be a you know, post motor age motel. Oh, is that right? It's yes. The, the gray building right beside it. Is that gray or? No, it's red. Red, red. Oh, with yeah. gray sign? Gray sign. Well, it's got an old neon sign yeah, or yeah. something, yeah. But, but that there's a couple of old structures right. in the back that are part of the complex I see. that are old. I see. Yeah, this was probably built in the front yard of yes. the two old houses. Yes. Okay. Back right. when they could do that. Okay. Okay. Are there any other items that come before the committee that were not previously uh, uh, put on the agenda? I'd like to just mention that I'm starting my Tuesday evening bike tours on history of the dead railroad conversions to bike paths and, and the politics of how they got created, all the trials and tribulations behind them.
first through third Tuesday of the month from 5 p.m. at my, my, my office at 14 Strong to dusk. And, and you free. Cool. No, actually, the, I'm going to be partnering with um, Walking Talking Tours. Oh, right. This first one will be yeah. free, but subsequently. If this is a commercial be, announcement, you have to do it after the meeting is over. Five bucks. Uh, I'm not making any money. <laughs> you say 5 p.m. Yeah, 5 p.m. Get underway at 5 15. First through third. And are these so first, second, and third? Yeah. Okay. There's are these actually, rides or, or, or These bike are bike rides. And, and they're slow, go? and everybody can do them. And um, I have one or two extra bikes if people really need them. But it'll be very interesting to point out all the railroad archaeology yeah. and the railroad history, the politics of how they got built, and the real estate effects on how what's going on in the market in these various neighborhoods. And how should somebody get in touch with you? Show up at my office at 5, five o'clock, 5.15. Okay. We're underway at 5.15, Strikers lose. And this is, okay. In downtown Chicago, they do that at 6 in the morning on six Sundays. 6 in the morning, oh my God. On Sundays, but you take your bike to Okay, well, I think that definitely concludes our, not only our schedule okay, building, but our office. Up, I, I will give one more. Very good. Heads Thank up. You, sir. I hope you noticed the article in the newspaper about the signs saying welcome to Northampton. Yes. yes. Um, my yes. wife is the co-chair yes. of yes. that project. And so that's proceeding the case. And it's basically um, you know, taking the historical visual themes of the city uh, and placing these signs at various locations that are entries to the city. Let me ask you a question. The stanchion near Haydenville. All over the city it seems to have been removed. Oh, the sign is that what well, that can be replaced. I have no idea on that. Okay, anyway. Oh, um, but Jerry Butker from the second board, third, third board, is uh, the other. Okay. Anyway, I've got to go. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay, and that's we are officially out of session.